it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with a new episode of What the Fact. So today we are going to be talking about the true nodes of the moon. We talk about it on the daily energy forecasts all the time. We often hear of it a little bit more when we are talking about the eclipses that we are about to experience. And of course, as we are in eclipse season, I thought it would be an appropriate time to kind of break a couple of things down to talk about some of these things that maybe we just don't have a good understanding about. Starting with the nodes of the moon. So we all know about the moon. We all know that the lunar goddess herself rules over our soul self. And that's why we track the moon each and every single day. It's our emotions or it's our intuition. It's our unconscious self. The moon is the most rapid moving luminary slash planet. It's not really a planet. It's a luminary, but planetary body, let's call it that we deal with on a daily basis. And the moon spends two and a half days in each of the signs floating through all of the signs of the zodiac in a month. And as she moves through the particular sign, she gives us particular life lessons. She gives us an opportunity to dabble in the shadow elements of each of the energies, unlocking, triggering, activating certain parts within our own soul self. We watch the moon as closely as we do because that is how our soul evolves. And we have to kind of pay attention to what the moon is up to at all times how she's interacting with the rest of the planets, what kind of lessons that she is trying to teach us in order for our souls to reach their maximum potential, their maximum evolvement. So the true nodes or the nodes of the moon, they aren't even really real things. They're actually mathematical points. So where do we find these mathematical points? Well, first of all, I want you to visualize the moon. And I want you to just visualize that the moon has its own orbit. And of course, we have been under the assumption that the sun has its own orbit and the earth has its own orbit. Um, I'm not going to get into the heliocentric or geocentric concepts, you know, whether the earth is revolving around the sun or whether all the planets are revolving around the earth. I think that's a debate, a conversation for another time. Um, but when you take a look at the sun and the moon in particular, um, from the perspective of earth, of course, what we get is these particular two points where the moon crosses the orbit of the sun. And when we're on this elliptic orbit. And when the sun and the moon kind of cross each other's paths, this is the north and south node of the moon. Now, it's very important. It's a little bit more important when we're talking about astrology with the nodes of the moon, because there is a lot of, I'm going to say, knowledge that we can gain about the spiritual lessons that we are set to learn as a collective, because that's what we're doing um, right now. We're watching the nodes of the moon uh, be activated and essentially giving the collective a huge spiritual lesson. Now, in your individual birth chart, you have both a north node and a south node. They always sit across from each other. They're always directly opposite of each other in your birth chart. Depending on what sign they fall in, that is a good indication of the spiritual lessons that you are here to learn. It's one of the main factors that we look at uh, when we do chart readings is like, what's your purpose here? What's your meaning? What's your mission? And we can tell a lot of that from the north and south nodes of the moon. Now, granted, them not being actual tangible things uh, kind of, you know, confuses a lot of people, but there are some very important mathematical positions in our chart um, that can tell us a lot. And that's why we don't dismiss um, these particular special points when we see a crossing of two planets or more uh, and the crossing of their orbit. So essentially, when the sun and the moon are are at these pivotal points where they're crossing each other's orbit, 
um, there's a merging of energies and that merging of the energy at that particular point, that particular sign in that particular degree has a lot to do with what it is that we are currently learning again as a collective in this particular instance. So the no the nodes of the moon are, are constantly changing about every 18 ish, 18 and a half ish months. And since November of 2021, the nodes of the moon have been on the Taurus and Scorpio axis, which means that any lunar eclipse that we've had, any solar eclipse that we've had has been on this Taurus and Scorpio axis. Now, prior to November of 2021, we were on the Gemini and Sagittarius axis for that previous 18 months. And that's why um, the Great Awakening, when that popped off in 2020, we were really being challenged with information or misinformation that had a direct impact on our spiritual beliefs. That's what the Gemini Sagittarius axis is all about is information and beliefs. Now we're on the Taurus and Scorpio axis. The Taurus and Scorpio axis is about death, Scorpio, and creation, Taurus. It is about renewal and resurrection of self, of life, Scorpio topics, and resources, skills, talents, Taurus energy. It is very much the give and take that we have to kind of come to peace with um, in our spiritual life lessons. We have to understand that the Scorpio energy is a water energy. It's emotional, it's intuitive, it's spiritual, it's transformative. While the Taurus energy is an earth energy. So we're talking about stabilizing our lives, building and creating, giving birth to something new, our resources, how it is that we are operating in the 3D realm, this materialistic realm, due to our spiritual understanding, Scorpio energy. So we've been on this axis since uh, the fall of 2021. Now, anytime that we're looking at, let's call it the nodial spiritual lessons in life, we have to take a good look at how the eclipses in that particular time frame, how they're going to pan out, how many are lunar, how many are solar? How many are in Taurus? How many are in Scorpio? All of this is very telling. Now, I am going to I am going to give you a rundown on all of the different eclipses that we've had and what they are, but let me break it down for you. There is 7 total eclipses. Well, I shouldn't say total cuz they're not all total. Some are partial, some are just fragmented. We'll talk about what that means in just a second, but Let's let's put it this way. In this Taurus and Scorpio life lesson chapter, there are seven eclipse events. And out of that, five have been and will be, once we're all finished up here, lunar eclipses, which means that there's only been two solar eclipses. So what do we know about this? First of all, solar is sun, lunar is moon. Solar eclipses mean that we are essentially having the energy, the light, the information from the sun blocked from reaching the earth. Why? Well, because the moon is kind of in the way. It's blocking that energy out. While the lunar energy means that we are kind of getting blocked out from receiving the information, the insight from our emotions, from our intuition. That's the lunar energy. We also have to look at it like the solar energy is masculine. The lunar energy is feminine. Typically speaking, solar eclipses have a tendency to create, I'm going to say, a magical chaotic state where we are seeing something added to our lives, seeing something kind of be gifted to us, um, blessed upon us. But most times it doesn't appear as a blessing. It actually appears as craziness, chaos, maybe even a form of punishment. But eventually speaking, because again, eclipses take about six months to actually uh, manifest, eventually we will see that 
whatever connection, whatever gift, whatever blessing, whatever actually entered into our lives around the time of a solar eclipse was actually for our soul's highest purpose, our soul's greatest potential. A lunar eclipse, typically speaking, brings the element, the wild card energy, um, to remove something out of our lives. And again, it may look as a form of punishment to, you know, lose someone that you love or lose a job or lose a part of yourself. However, that loss will eventually uh, be looked at in hindsight as a blessing in disguise. And again, takes about six months for that particular energy um, to manifest. So what's interesting is that we are having this lunar solar eclipse energy back and forth from the time we entered into the Taurus and Scorpio axis to the time that we move out of it. But it's even more amplified because solar gifts us lunar removes things from us. But yet we have this on the Taurus and Scorpio axis. Scorpio axis removes, takes something away, puts an ending to a closure to a death to something in order for us to resurrect, renew, recalibrate, and totally transform ourselves, our lives. While the Taurus energy is about seeing something be born, seeing something be birthed, seeing something new be built or created. Again, earth energy. And when you look at the Scorpio energy, which is water, and you look at Taurus energy, that is earth, well, when you water the earth and you nourish it and you nurture it, something will grow. So we do have a lot of interesting dynamics here. Seven of them from November 2021 to October of 2023 on this Taurus and Scorpio axis. Five of them are lunar, which is emotions, intuition, spirituality, which has a tendency to remove something out of our lives. And two of them are solar, gifting us with something, adding something to our lives. To go even deeper than that, four out of these seven events are Taurus energy, birthing, creating, building, bringing something to life, values, relationships, money matters, self-worth, self-love, while three of them are Scorpio events, death, rebirth, resurrection, transformation, shadow realm, spirituality, intuition, so what we know to be true is that there's been a lot more opportunity to build, to create, to give birth to something new in our physical 3D realms, because of course that's the Taurus energy. So our physical lives have seen a lot of A, endings, in order for B, beginnings to actually take place. And when we talk about endings and beginnings, we talk about Scorpio energy, Scorpio energy is the death that is needed before the rebirth can happen. And the Scorpio energy is emotional, is intuitive, is on a soul level. So we've had a lot of soul changes. And how have we received that? Through some very tough love spiritual life lessons. And what has that consisted of? Well, damage, death, destruction. We have to understand that Pluto and Mars, the god of the underworld and the god of war, rule over Scorpio energy, where death, damage, and destruction is absolutely necessary and needed in order for there to be a clean slate to build on top of. And what are we building in place of some of the elements that have been removed? Something more in alignment with more mission, with more purpose, with more passion, with what it is that we truly desire. That's that Mars topic and theme. I desire actively, aggressively pursuing the path of what I actually desire. While the Taurus energy is ruled over by Venus, the goddess of love and beauty and worth. And she is heart-based, heart-centered, 
And both Taurus and Scorpio energy are fixed signs. They don't like change at all. This is why since November of 2021, and as we continue through these particular um, eclipse seasons into October of 2023, this is why the change, the transformation, the death, the rebirth, the resurrection has been so freaking tough. And it's been so freaking tough because we're in a fixed energy. We don't want to change. The changes have been forced upon us. The death, the damage, the destruction has been karmically forced upon us. Removing things out of our life, cleaning the slate, clearing the path, and putting us in a serious situation where we have no choice but to let go, no choice but to actually roll with the punches and change and no choice but to build something better in whatever placement has been totally destroyed and removed out of our lives. So it's been a lot. Now, we have to kind of understand that the nodes of the moon, because they change every 18 months, we are about to, in 2023, move into the Aries and Libra axis. Now, we will see an Aries event and a Libra event intertwined into the eclipse seasons of 2023. Um, We, as I record this, are about to have our new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio energy at two degrees here on October 25th. We will be having a total lunar eclipse, a full moon in Taurus energy, 16 degrees on November 8th. That wraps up eclipse season for 2022. We only ever have two eclipse seasons per year. We had one in the spring. We have one in the fall. When we move into 2023, our spring eclipse season is going to basically initiate the Aries and Libra axis and wrap up the Taurus and Scorpio axis. In May of 2023, we will be having our lunar eclipse in Scorpio. And in October of 2023, we will be having our lunar eclipse in Taurus. And that will wrap up that particular life lesson for the collective. So then we move on to the Aries and Libra axis. And I'll probably go a little bit more into depth on what we can expect from that in my 2023 forecast for the year ahead. However, just keep in mind that Aries energy is the very first sign of the zodiac. It's a fire energy. It is ego centered. What do I want? What do I need? What do I desire? Who am I? Versus the Libran energy that is an air energy that is more concerned about other people, the relationship, putting our own wants, needs, and desires on the back burner to do what is best for the other person, for the team, for the group. Now, we are going to see a lot of very, very spicy topics and themes with the Aries and Libra axis that we're about to move into. But the precursor to that is what is being cleared out, what is being kind of taken away, what is being removed in our lives in order for us to build brand new foundations. Now, granted, it's been a low and slow process bringing new things to life. That is classic with fixed energy. It's even more classic with earth energy because everything takes its sweet as time. What we know to be true is that we're going to get a little bit of a fire lit underneath our butts, a lot more motivation, a lot more inspiration when we move into that fire energy of Aries energy. And of course, We're going to go balls to the walls in order to make things happen and learn those lessons and initiate new cycles and really see the productivity actually take place. And then we're going to have to balance things out again, seeing where it is that maybe we did things in extreme when we move into the Libra and energy. So that is what the true nodes of the moon are all about. Some of the things that we can kind of take away is, first of all, how many, how many events are actually taking place 
on this particular axis. And as we've covered, seven, seven in total. And again, five of those are lunar. So we know that there's a deep emotional, spiritual transformation taking place within each and every single freaking one of us in order for us to change who we are, change our beliefs, change whatever needs to be changed and transformed within ourself in order to have the boldness, the bravery, the courage to do what we got to do to manipulate and maneuver our physical realms to start building, creating, and giving birth to new elements. Again, Taurus energy. So, you know, there's a lot that we can learn from whether the eclipses that we're having are partial or total eclipses. Now, a lot of that is due to how close this particular moon event is taking place to the nodes of the moon. The new moon solar eclipse that we're about to have in Scorpio here on October 25th is a partial solar eclipse because it's taking place at two degrees. And right now the nodes of the moon are approximately halfway through the signs. They're about 16, 15 to 16 degrees right now. So because this moon event is taking place at the beginning degrees of Scorpio and the nodes of the moon are actually halfway through Scorpio and Taurus right now, this is just a partial eclipse. Doesn't mean that we aren't going to see unexpected situations pop off, that there isn't blessings coming our way. It doesn't diminish it. It's still an eclipse. It's very, very powerful energy. But What's more powerful than a partial is a total eclipse, which we will be having November 8th. It's a full moon, total lunar eclipse in Taurus because it's happening at 16 degrees and the nodes of the moon are approximately at 16 degrees. That is going to be super, super strong, super impactful. One of the other things that we have to consider when we talk about the nodes of the moon is that there is a north node and a south node. The north node is the sole path that the collective needs to be on in order to reach our collective soul mission, if you will, our soul's evolvement. The north node is in Taurus. The south node is in Scorpio. The south node is our past experiences, our past emotions, our past lives even. It's everything that is old and familiar to us that we're having a hard time letting go of in order for us to pursue the new path, the new mission, the new purpose that we have to pursue in order to evolve. So on this Taurus and Scorpio axis, what we have to let go of is our shadow self, Scorpio energy. What we have to let go of, put a death to, put an ending to, put a closure to, is who it is that we have had to be. Who it is that we had to be because of the positions that we've been in. And the soul elements there, the emotions that we've been holding on, the grudges that we've been holding on, those shadow elements that we've been holding on, has been preventing us from truly being in our heart's alignment, Taurus energy, Venus as its ruler, heart chakra, heart's alignment to build, to create, to give birth to elements in our physical realm that are heart and soul aligned. So we on November 8th, having the full moon, total lunar eclipse in Taurus energy will be taking place on top of the North Node, which means that we're going to feel torn. What are we feeling torn about? Well, the North Node is the strongest because it's the cosmos's way of pulling us in the direction that we need to be. But of course, our ego self is so attached to how things have been and how things always were that we're having a hard time with that. So we're constantly looking back. Again, South Node Scorpio, we're looking back. We're holding on to all the olds. We are kind of allowing our fears, our insecurities, our doubts, again, Shadow Realm of Scorpio energy, to block us from actually aligning with our power, with our strength, with our ability to manifest, to build, to create. Again, Taurus, Venus energy. 
So we also have to take a look at the fact that, you know, solar eclipses tend to start something because solar eclipses happen with the new moon and new moon is a brand new beginning. Um, Basically, eclipse energy just makes new moons on steroids. Um, The lunar energies come with full moons and the full moon is always about release, always about endings. So again, we're seeing these topics and themes of north node, south node, you know, what we're trying to aim for and what we need to let go of versus the Taurus and Scorpio energy, which is what do I need to put a death to in order to have the space to create something more heart aligned. And then we have solar and lunar energies at play with both new and full moons that are about new beginnings, new cycles, new initiation versus old things that are preventing us from doing the things that we know that we have to do in order to get to where it is that we desire to be. So we have a lot of overlapping topics and themes, and that's why we feel absolutely cray cray when we have eclipse energy thrown into an already cray cray energetic situation with a new moon or with a full moon. So with that being said, you're probably sitting there saying, okay, well, that's great. How is this going to affect me personally? Now, this is where things get interesting. This is where you need to dive into your own birth chart. If you do not know how to dive into your own birth chart, I have made videos on this. You can go and check the playlist on what the fact on my YouTube channel, and you will find out a how to get your birth chart, b what it is that you're actually looking at, and c there's one there called moon events on how to identify where particular moon events are happening in your chart. So we always want to look at, first of all, because this is a Taurus and Scorpio axis, do you have any personal planet placements in Taurus or Scorpio energy? If the answer is yes, this is likely going to be that much more impactful and transformative to you than if you didn't. If you don't have Scorpio and Taurus placements in your chart, Taurus Taurus and Scorpio energy still rules over a particular area, a house in your birth chart, which can be very indicative on where it is that you are going to see these particular changes take place. So even if you don't have personal planet placements in that energy, you still have Taurus and Scorpio energy ruling over a particular area of your chart and therefore impacting a particular area of your life. To go even further into that, if you are a fixed sign, right? So Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, this is likely going to impact you mostly. Why? Because this is a fixed signed access that we are on, that we are learning. So even if you don't have any Scorpio or Taurus personal placements, and let's say that the Scorpio and Taurus energy that is ruling over a particular area of your house isn't as dramatic as it was, but you are an Aquarius or you have an Aquarius moon or you are a Leo rising or whatever the case may be, you will have a much more transformative impact from these particular eclipses on this particular axis than other people. Even deeper than that, because this is, again, October 25th, as I'm recording this, This is a new moon, partial solar eclipse at two degrees in Scorpio. If you have any planet at a two degree of a fixed sign, Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, Leo, that particular placement, that particular energy is going to be amplified as far as the changes and transformations, the death and the rebirth taking place in your chart. And even to take you one step further, just to encapsulate, you know, this whole eclipse season, um, the full moon total lunar eclipse in Taurus will be taking place at 16 degrees. So if you have anything at a 16 degree fixed sign placement, so again, Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio, this is going to be majorly transformative for you. But everybody is getting a little bit of a taste of this because again, 
collectively speaking, we are learning the spiritual life lessons that the Taurus and Scorpio energy is here to teach us. So nobody's getting away unscathed. It's just that if you have particular placements or areas in your chart or personal planets at those particular degrees, your life is changing in a much more dramatic way than somebody that has just a very overall plain life lesson coming to them because of their lack of fixed energy, their lack of personal planet placements, and the lack of having them at that particular degree. So guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope it wasn't just a bunch of blabber. It is all very interesting. Um, I think that having a good understanding of where we are collectively learning the lessons is a good understanding to have just so that we can make a little bit more sense of this chaotic energetic shit show that we're all in right now. And of course, being able to take this information and apply it to your own individual chart will just kind of help you understand why it is that you're going through some particular life lessons that you're going through at this moment. It is a very interesting thing. We have to pay attention to the moon. We have to pay attention to the spiritual lessons being thrown at us. And especially in this Taurus and Scorpio axis, we have to be open to change. So I hope that was helpful. I want to thank you for tuning in. Please stay tuned for the next episode where I'm not sure what we're going to talk about, but we'll figure it out when the next episode drops. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.